What's up, guys? It's the Faruqi Brothers back with another video. And today for you guys, we're going to be talking about the big news that came yesterday night. Warner Brothers basically did a whole overall shift of their release calendar for 2020 and 2021 and 2022. And majority, that their DC Comics properties were the first and the most to move. So as we know, the pandemic has completely changed the way the theatrical model works. In fact, it hasn't changed it. It shut it down. And theaters have been by and large closed uh, around the world. And uh, for America in particular, which makes up over 50% of the theatrical market, uh, the main markets, which is New York City and Los Angeles, have been closed. They're still closed. And when theaters did open, they didn't do well, right? And uh, I can just hit a quick, a quick number uh, numbers for you guys that, you know, in October 2020, we're right now, numbers for the box office are 93% down compared to what they were. Last year, at the same time, when Joker was coming out, with his, things were looking good, right? 2019 was actually the highest box office in history with how many movies did well. But 2020, things have changed out of everyone's hands, and the pandemic has ravaged through this area. So let's get to the news at hand, and I'm going to pull it out right now and uh, just give you the new release dates, right? The new releases for all the movies before we get to discussion of why uh, this is happening and what kind of future the market even looks like. So let's talk about the big one. The big one is the Batman, right? A lot of us have been anticipating it. It's our most anticipated theatrical movie coming out anytime soon. Uh, so Matt Reeves, the Batman, originally slated to come out October 2021, has now been pushed to March 4th, 2022, right? And The Flash, right? Obviously, Michael Keaton, Ben Affleck, Ezra Miller, highly anticipated movie, was supposed to come out June 3rd, 2022. It's moving several months down to November 2022, right? Let's move on to Shazam. Shazam 2 was originally going to be taking uh, the, the spot that Flash is taking now, which is November 2022. But now it's getting pushed all the way to June 2023, which is interesting considering uh, the, there's kids that are being shot, uh, being filmed for this movie, and all of them are growing up quickly. So I'm very interested to see how, they're, how that's going to change how that movie is going on. And then lastly, Black Adam uh, has been completely removed from the slate. So we don't know when it's coming out. We don't know what's going on in that movie, right? So, and of course, there's other movies like Matrix got pushed down. Dune got pushed down. Dune actually took the Batman's release date. So things have been moving around. There's a lot of things happening. But Zian, let me come to you. Like, give me like your overall reaction on this, especially when it comes to these movies moving, uh, particularly the Batman. We all know you're the uh, resident Batman fan. So yeah, I think for the, the Batman, um, I think it's pretty obvious because well, firstly, you know that um, they stopped filming. They were not allowed to film on real locations anymore, which is obviously a big hindrance to the project. And they were forced to move into um, on set and to create CGI and more practical sets in a studio instead of filming on location. And obviously, that obviously that was a big setback for them as well. Um, you had Pattinson who contracted the virus, so that was a small delay as well. I think it's just smart on their part to delay it, not just because of the pandemic, but because it allows them to have a little more time and a little more, um, you know, it spaces out a little more because obviously a lot of things are pushed down in the schedule. So um, they're being forced to rush, rush, rush to get it out at the initial release date. So being pushed to 2022 is a no brainer, I think uh, on WB's part, as well as, um, you know, you can see, like you said, the theater numbers, the box office numbers, they've been a huge decline since the pandemic started. And I, I feel like um, they're not going to reopen anytime soon. It's going to be a, even more of a pushback on the theater industry in terms of that, in terms of people going to actually watch movies in the theater as opposed to staying home in a safe environment. So with all that in mind, I think it's a no-brainer that the Batman and Matt Reeves and the whole production team decided to move it down. I think it'll actually help out the film more in the long run in terms of letting them have um, more time to work on things. Maybe somewhere down the road, they'll be able to uh, go back on location and film in real practical sets rather than in studios. So I think all that combined, I think it was a smart move on their part and it will probably put out an even better product with the time they have now. And you know, it's interesting thinking about all these movies releasing and what it means, but there's also movies that are completely finished, ready to go, locked and loaded for release and they just can't get released for some reason. And that movie is Wonder Room in 1984. And it's been, you know, originally it was supposed to come out last year. You know, and I always wonder if Warner Brothers should have just released it last year as intended because it was done. They just held it for one more year. And now that one year has been pushed, pushed, pushed all the way to December 25th, right? So, Umar, this is one for you. 
do you see this movie even staying put on this release date? Like, what is your thought on Wonder Woman 84 and this pandemic? Like, what, what's the state of this movie? I think because they did so well the first time around, they're going to just wait and uh, keep on waiting. But the thing that sucks about that is that um, a lot of people are going to feel like they've already seen it. Like, there's so much advertisement and there's so much, so many trailers that we've seen that, like Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman 1984 was a movie that we were pretty excited for, but now it's like there's like a fatigue with it. Like that's that's hard to explain because it's like we've never we've never had this this happen where you have a movie that pretty much the final trailers and the main trailers have been out for so long. Uh, so much marketing has been put and and it just keeps getting pushed. Uh, but I think they should look at um, putting it on a streaming service. Um, and of course, I mean, you're not, you you might not crack a billion. And I, to be honest, I don't think they were going to crack a billion. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Even theatrically, I, I just don't think that would happen. But uh, it might not make those numbers, but you'll still, you'll still do well. And because, which is a bigger point that you guys can talk about more, is that the, uh, the streaming service is going to be the interim, like, way of making money through, like, with this, with, with the entertainment industry. Like it's gonna be the big dog for a while uh, um, because uh, the virus is not gonna go away like in two seconds. It's gonna take some time. And some people are saying it's gonna take up to two years just to get a vaccine. So they need to figure out in the interim how to actually put out things. And I think they shouldn't be afraid to actually take risks. Now uh, they're lucky because the Snyder Cut is gonna, is, is gonna be a good kind of, um, uh, a type of litmus test to see uh, how well it's going to do. But I think that's also, I think it's going to overperform uh, partly because uh, because of the way that movie's coming out and how it t- took like two, three years and the fans asked for it. And now there's like a whole thing behind it. So that's, that, that's the different uh, category, but still uh, movies like the Batman might struggle with the same thing that Wonder Woman 1984 did. So I think that the marketing for the Batman should be kept to a minimal. They've done a good job so far where we've gotten one trailer and they pretty much didn't show much in that trailer. Keep the marketing to an all-time low. Put out things here and there, but keep it to an all-time low until you actually see things get better. Uh, because the Batman is a movie that will crack a billion. So um, the virus really hasn't left anything untouched. Yeah, and I think you made, you made a really good points here. And it's one of the big ones was this concept of the billion-dollar movie. And I think... Uh, while you might think that Batman is might make a billion, I think no movie's gonna make a billion, maybe ever now. I think it might be the the death of the billion dollar movie because for that to happen, you need people to go in mass. You need people to go in mass to the movie theater, like it was when the four of us watched Endgame together, and people were like on top of each other's heads to get into the movie theater. But with this pandemic, even when a virus, even when a a vaccine comes out, distributing that, having everyone take it and inoculate themselves, that's that's a whole other process, and it, it takes so long before people will be like, let me just sit neck and neck with people back to back like we already know if theaters the theaters that did open around the world there's staggered seating there's space between rows there's spaces between aisles like they're trying in a way to have limited capacity so you can't even have it a a movie do well in this situation this is why everyone's moving but there is one movie that did try the test the waters and we saw what happened so samir why don't you tell me like the theatrical model what you think about it and the one movie that came out and didn't do as well as it could have yeah, we saw how poorly Tenet did in theaters. Um, I guess out of the four of us, only I've seen it, which which really says a lot considering how big how, how big fan we are of Christopher Nolan. And uh, we also saw how Disney tried to test Mulan on the streaming service, and that didn't do that well either. So uh, I guess holding the movies is just the best option right now. Yeah, I definitely agree. I think it's going to be very interesting what happens next because – only two movies are left on the slate, which is Disney's Soul, which is a, a, a Pixar an animated movie, which I think is just destined for Disney+. Plus. I think it's not going to release. And Wonder Woman. We're waiting on Wonder Woman. And then when those two movies inevitably delay or go to streaming, there's going to be no movies this year. Like 2020 was a year of no movies. And the movies that did come out, like Tenet or, or small movies like Birds of Prey in the beginning of the year before the pandemic hit, they're, they're kind of going to be forgotten in the big scheme of things because this this year was not a year for entertainment. This year was the year where the world was on fire. So no one's going to be thinking about that. Now, next year remains to be seen. I don't, I, I'm very pessimistic about next year in general. That's why when Batman moved to 2022, I'm like, 
Okay, like because I cut the only thing that you could say is that basically that's the only thing that's gonna happen. Yeah, because it's on streaming that's because it's already shot. It. You know, they're yeah. actually doing they're doing some uh, uh, reshoots this week and next week. So like, uh, some the streaming is the future. I think that's that's clear. Like things you can make and distribute to streaming because Mandalorian, <laughs> like Star Wars, these are the things that you can watch and people are gonna show up. So there's ways to get your entertainment through that. But in the meantime, for those who love, like I know myself, I love. The theater experience of sitting and watching theater, especially when the four of us watch it together, is no experience like it. But unfortunately, I don't see the next time the four of us we watch a movie together in theaters. I don't see it. When is it gonna happen? Two years from now, three years from now, it's hard to tell. Either way, I know it's pessimistic, but it's gonna be very interesting to see what the theatrical model looks like and when movies are gonna release and how they're gonna release. But the question is, what do you think about all this? I want you to let me know in the comments below and join the debate. From myself, from Zion, from Umar, and from Samir, we're the Faruqi Brothers, and we'll see you next time. Peace out.